Well, good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Lutheran Church and School. It's great to be here with you today. Uh, my name is Pastor Andrew Apple, and welcome. Welcome to this morning's worship service. Uh, we are glad that you are here, and we especially want to welcome all of our students and their parents and their special guests uh, to this service today. And thank you, students, for being here. We look forward to hearing your voices as we praise our Lord together this morning. A couple announcements uh, before we begin today. I want to give you an update on our capital improvement. You may have noticed that there have been some changes going on since the last time uh, you were in the sanctuary or you just kind of see a lot of work happening here on the campus. And I wanted to show you uh, what has happened with those generous donations uh, that you have made towards our capital improvement fund and uh, what you have done, congregation, uh, to, um, to enhance uh, this campus and this, our school and our worship space here. So kind of go over uh, a couple of these uh, slides here this morning and we got some pictures to show you of the different things that have been happening the last couple of months. All right, first we have the sanctuary painting and flooring. The entire sanctuary in here was uh, updated, uh, paint was uh, re the old paint was removed, new paint put up, and flooring uh, put down uh, as well. So it is a nice, clean, acoustically better worship space. Um, and you get a chance before you leave to take, kind of look up behind the choir loft up there. There's a new organ speaker screen. Uh, that was a screen print of Luther's Rose, which is actually from the stained glass window over our door as you enter into the narthex. And so that was specially made to cover our organ speakers. Uh, the transept area, the accounting office, and the chapel flooring, uh, chapel all have new flooring as well, enhancing those spaces and improving the acoustics uh, in those two areas. In our school, we see that uh, the eighth grade classrooms and our STEAM classrooms have had new flooring put in, that beautiful dark wood color flooring. Uh, it's very nice, helps keep the classrooms uh, not only visually looking good, but also helps us to keep them healthier. By, uh, it's a little bit easier to clean, of course, than the carpet. And so it just gives a modern, updated, and a little sophisticated look, I might add. Uh, you'll notice the bright shine over in our classroom hallways and over in our fellowship hall floors. Uh, you, you'll see the brightness, the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah glory as it were in the old... No, I'm just not. We're not that far, but it's close with our uh, new wax flooring that, are, that is in all of our schools and the halls of our school and of our fellowship hall. Uh, I tried to shave one time and it was just beautiful. You can just bend down and... School doors, not only this was this an improvement uh, to help with our weatherproofing, but also to enhance uh, security features here. We have new doors that were purpose-built for our school, and those are going in, have gone in, and will continue uh, to be installed and making our campus look better and also securer. Uh, additional doors will be coming soon around the fellowship hall, the church office, and doors of the CLC. And so those will be easier, most of them will be easier to open, have auto locking features, these sorts of things, uh, be a nice addition to our campus as well. Uh, also coming soon, new flooring and improvements in the North Narthex bathrooms back there. Those will be getting a facelift. And also roofs, a lot of roof repair uh, going on over on the campus of FLS and also here across, uh, across campus wide getting some of the much needed roof replacements done. Restriping of the parking, lo parking lot and resealing is also on the agenda. That will be accomplished very soon. Gonna get the parking spaces uh, uh, kind of segmented out, looking a little better and more inviting. And a new sign we're going to take, uh, right now we have uh, multiple signs, particularly two signs, one out in front of our school, one out in front of our church. We are one ministry here, uh, First Lutheran Church and school. We're, we're one group, we're one big family in the Lord. And one sign will help be a visual representation of that. So we'll have one sign that will combine our church and our school signs. A nice, beautiful digital sign will be out there on Nursery Road. And also we're replacing uh, new ceiling tiles and insulation and in building B. You might notice it's waiting on bids right now. It's been very difficult 
uh, to actually get bids and get contractors to commit to some things. There's a, in case you haven't noticed, a supply chain issue. Uh, and also a lot of contractors are backlogged with work. So when we see waiting on bids, it's the fact that we, we, we're get, trying to be the best stewards of the money that has been donated. So we may have one bid, we may have two, but we're looking to get a couple bids, get the best price and also the best quality. So um, that's what's going on when you see that wording there, waiting on bids. We hope to have that accomplished though very soon as the Lord permits. And then finally here, the entire uh, fellowship hall, the Christian Life Center, also known as the gym, and here in the sanctuary, uh, all the woods that needs to be replaced will be replaced. The paint will be stripped down and a new cone to a paint applied uh, for basically the entire campus. Um, how can you help? Uh, if you have any, uh, if you're handy with any sort of repairs or improvements, uh, please let us know. And of course, uh, as the Lord leads you to uh, donate continually to the Capital Improvement Fund, please be in prayer about that as we continue to enhance uh, our campus here for the glory of God and the continuation of his work. And thank you. Thank you for all that you have contributed um, to, uh, to this project. Uh, next and finally, we, yesterday we had the LWML Bazaar. If you had a chance to be here for that, uh, good luck if you were able to find a parking spot. Uh, I arrived at 8.30, there was already a line in queue and people waiting at the door. I felt kind of guilty walking by them with my key, so I went all the way around the building where no one saw me going in. <laughs> But it was, it was a great, the, the parking lot was entirely filled. In fact, folks were parking out on Nursery Road. Uh, the ladies of the LWML, you did a wonderful job. Thank you very much uh, for putting on this event. I, in case you don't know, the LWML does this every year. Uh, the funds that they raise go to help families. Uh, it's just a great thing. It's just a great thing that they do. So ladies, thank you very much uh, for the work that you did with that. And thank you as well for, um, for, doing, uh, for being a part of, uh, of this particular uh, event and coming out and shopping and buying all of those, all of those goodies. I think that's it. I, I thought I had one more announcement, but it slipped my mind. Bake sale. That's, that's what it was. That's what I, I got. I, I was just starting to think food. And then bake sale after church over in the fellowship hall. Miss Tony, is that right? In the breezeway. Because that's right. Uh, Pastor O'Brien is out of town today, so there won't be a continuation of his Bible study this afternoon. Uh, but instead, let's enjoy some fellowship and some baked goods there in the breezeway right out this door uh, there and uh, enjoy the good. I had six cookies yesterday. It's very good. Anyways, with that, let's stand. Let's greet each other in the peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's blessings on your worship this morning. As we gather this morning, we are the church, God's people baptized into Christ Jesus. When we were baptized, uh, his name was put upon us. Our sins were washed away. We became children of God. Our beginning is made in his holy name, the name put upon our hearts and our minds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today is the second to last Sunday in the church year. As the long green season of Pentecost comes to its close, in this service today we are reminded that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. From the book of Daniel we will hear uh, that the wise in faith shall shine like the sun, sun like the stars in the world of the darkness of disbelief. From Hebrews, we learn that the blood of Jesus has given us the right and confidence to enter into the holy place of God's presence. 
And from the gospel according to St. Mark, today we'll hear how Jesus points to the signs of destruction that are to come, and to the promise that he gives to us that he who endures to the end shall be saved. O oh Lord, you make known to me the path of life. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Beloved of God, let us come before our gracious Lord to confess our sins and to receive his gracious absolution. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the almighty and merciful God, grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ in his stead and by his command, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, by your bountiful goodness, release us from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our weakness we have brought upon ourselves, that we may stand firm into the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated this morning as I invite our choir forward.
This time I invite uh, any children in our congregation to come forward as well for our children's message with Mr. Kill. So any other kids that like to join us or kids at heart? Come on down for the, for the children's can message. Right can I sit right there? Can we move over just a bit? Uh, thank you. All right. Hi. Hello. <coughs> Hopefully I'm on here. All right, when I was younger, my, I think it was my mom probably that taught me, though I did go to a Lutheran school like a lot of you when I was younger, so I might have learned it at school, but I learned a little finger play, and we're gonna, we're gonna work on doing that today. All right, hold your hands like that. Everybody hold your hands like that. Okay, and you're gonna put your fingers like that. Can you, just like that. All right, some of you may have done this already. I am sure. And you're going to bend it over just like that. You can do that? I have not. Okay. You have not done this? Awesome. And we'll learn something new today. All right. Now, if you can, and this is the hard part, you're going to take your two pointer fingers and put them up just like that. Like that. Okay. Oh, good job. All right. And it went like this. It went, this is the church. This is the steeple. Open the doors. See the doors open? See all the people. Okay. All right, let's try it again. All right. Got to get those fingers limbered up. All right, let's try it one more time. This is the church. This is the steeple. Open the doors. See all the people. Okay. All right. All right. Some of you have already heard that. I can, I can tell you've already learned that. So, and I'm sure from, this, from the response we got, some of your parents and grandparents probably heard it too at some point. Um, so why are we talking about that? Because we're here at church today. Why, why do we come to church? Anybody have any ideas? Yes. Because to learn about God and Jesus. To learn about God and Jesus? Yes. Um, to, to read about the Bible. To, to listen to the Bible and read it. Yes. Why else? What did you guys just do? Sing. Sing praises to God, huh? Okay. And to be with some of our fellow Christians and, and be able to experience that joy together. So let's go ahead and do a quick prayer and thank God that we can come to church and be together as a group and get to see those doors open and all the people as we have see today. You can see all the people. And let's do a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you brought us here today. We thank you that we got to sing these praises to you up here, and we get to do so as the rest of the service goes on, that we get to hear your word and hear of the love that you've given to us. Please watch over us today and all that we do. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, some of them. Our first lesson today is from the Old Testament book of Daniel, 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. There shall be a time of trouble such as never been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. 
And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of God from the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wonderful job. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 11 through 25. The writer of Hebrews writes, And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But when Christ has offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool of his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law on their hearts and write them on their minds. 
Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us under, through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of God for the people of God. rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 13. And as he, that is Jesus, came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumor of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Be on your guard. For they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trier and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever it is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. The one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Please, Please be seated.
feel like that needs an amen and a hand clap. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text uh, for today is from the ending of our second lesson. That was the the book of Hebrews. I'll uh, read these verses again uh, real quickly. Let us hold fast to the confession of hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. All right, now this is not a trick question, I promise. Why are we here? Why do we gather? Hmm? I mean, why are we here today or watching this service online right now? Why do we go to church? Hmm? Now this is not a hostile question. It's not an accusatory question. It's an honest one based upon the reading from, the ending of the reading from Hebrews today. It's worthy of our consideration. Something I like to, to do, my definition of fun is odd, but something I like to do is to ask my contemporaries, people in my age group. I don't really know where I fit in. Uh, some say I'm a millennial. Some say I'm a part of that like, period of time that no one really knows what to do with. I prefer that because that's kind of cool. But in any case, I like to ask my contemporaries about church. I like to see what they say. Mostly I hear some things like this from, from believers. Don't go to church, be the church. Or, my faith is not about rituals, but a personal relationship with Jesus. Hey, they're catchy. Kind of like some of that. It's easy to say, easy to remember, a little potent. It's got a small bit of truth to it. But when I hear those things, I'm often saddened because they're the responses that are given to justify not being together with fellow Christians, to justify lone wolf Christianity. I mean, after all, it it sounds like a really good excuse to reject God's love and gifts for us. So why are we here this day? Going to church, being a part of a community of believers, accountable to each other, making our faith a priority, this is what it means to be the church. This is what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Gathering as one body, brothers and sisters gathered around the altar to be served by our good shepherd, his gifts, word, and sacrament. So why are we here? Consider how our text from Hebrews begins in the entirety. Begins and ends with Jesus, and it's contextualized within the ministry of the local congregation. For it is here that Jesus distributes his forgiveness throughout all times and on place, all places, the preaching of the gospel and the gifts of the gospel, holy communion and baptism. Jesus draws us near to his Father in heaven by sprinkling our hearts clean and washing our bodies with pure water. In Christ, we gather as one body to be strengthened in our confession of faith and in hope and to encourage one another to live in this world and to love our neighbor, to serve our Savior. So why are we here today? We are here because a life in Christ, a life of faith, depends upon Jesus feeding us with his word with his gifts. We are not to neglect this, but to rejoice when we gather as we receive those good things from him. To receive these tangible gifts, that is why we are here in church this morning. To receive those gifts of God's love for us. After all, We have Holy Communion where Christ comes to us in with and under bread and wine to strengthen our faith, to forgive our sins. In baptism, we are made his own children. And in confession and absolution, we hear the promise of the gospel forgiveness 
freshly given and applied to our lives. This is what makes us the church. And so knowing this this morning, and going down this train of thought, perhaps the question then is this. Maybe it's not so much of why are we here, but what keeps us from being here? Hmm? What keeps us from being here? For if this is the place where we are absolved, if this is the place where we partake in the mill with Christ and all of the saints, both past and present, if this is the place where I am forgiven and accepted and loved, then what keeps me away? Hmm? A hatred of religious things or people? I kind of share that. A distrust of organized religion? I'm there too. The guy that's preaching the sermon is boring? I definitely agree with that one. <laughs> Maybe it's more difficult to pinpoint for you this morning or for me. Maybe it's the fear of judgment, a shame of a broken marriage, embarrassment with struggles from mental illness or some other emotional trauma we have faced. Maybe it's because we're hung over from too much partying the night before. Maybe it's even more personal. We're disappointed with God. He was not there when we needed him. His ears were deaf to our fervent prayers and cries for help were answered with silence, or so it seemed. Our sickness was not healed, our marriage was not restored, our lives still are broken. If these reasons keep us from being here, then we are not alone. You are not alone in those reasons. All of us here are like this, believe it or not. For this is not a place for those who have no problems, never doing any wrong. This is not a place uh, for people who are golden, whom God applauds for a life of moral excellence. Oh no. The Church of Christ is for the lost and the losers. It's for the hurting and the bleeding, the hungover and the crying, those walking, crawling, or being carried on a stretcher after being wounded by life. The church is not a mirrored, filled gym to stretch our spiritual muscles. On the contrary, it's a temple where the broken are put back together, the defiled are cleansed, the hurt made whole. The church is where you and I, sinful, hurting people, dirty people, are bathed, washed clean, and then robed in Christ's righteousness made sons and daughters of the king. This is the place where that which is broken is healed because of the one broken for you. So brothers and sisters, knowing this, let us not neglect being here. Let us not neglect gathering together. Let's don't pretend we don't need each other or God's gifts or that there's something more important than what God has for us. We are here because Jesus is given for us and to us. So what should keep us from here? Absolutely nothing. Jesus is not embarrassed by you or ashamed of you. Nor does he hate you. In fact, the quite opposite is true. Knowing everything about you, he went to the cross for you so that he could be with you and show you the great love that he has for you. This is the place where you are welcome. This is the place where love and forgiveness can be found for his sake. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that gift of faith given to us in our baptism is confessed this morning through the words of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is one of the earliest summaries or confessions of the Christian faith, who God is and what we believe as Christians. Would you stand with me this morning as we confess our faith together? Saints of God, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning in our prayers, we remember Marcus Howard, uh, who is having surgery this morning. Let us pray for the whole people of God, Christ Jesus, and for all according to their needs. That the Lord grant safety and blessing to his church, that standing firm upon the ground of his promise and washed with the blood of our Savior, we would endure to the very end in faith and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord would deliver us from an unjust government and unrighteous laws and provide for us elected and appointed civil servants who heed his word. Protect us from our enemies, O Lord, and enable us to worship you and serve each other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that you, O Lord, would open our eyes to the needs of the poor, advocate for the cause of life, preserve the aged and infirm, and be faithful witnesses to our children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord would grant to our pastors the wisdom that comes down from above, so that the word of God be preached with all truth and conviction, that we may hear and believe God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord would deliver the sick from illness, the troubled from their afflictions, the dying from fear, and the grieving from sorrow. Especially, O oh Lord, we lift before you all of those who are struggling in any way with uh, mental illness or emotional struggles. We lift before you all of those who are still grieving from the disasters that have befallen to their communities. And Lord, we lift before you this morning uh, Marcus Howard, who is undergoing surgery at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord would fill us with gratitude for all his gifts and a spirit of generosity to support the poor and a spirit of delight to return to him the tithes and offerings he is due. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that you, O Lord, would deliver us from the persecution and error and that we, standing firm upon the firm ground of Christ's death and resurrection, would endure to the day of his coming when all of those who have gone before us shall be reunited with. Let us pray to the Lord. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord, trusting in his firm promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we depart from this place, receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his great love and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Love Jesus. Love others. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.